Yeah, so they were talking about, you know, why it's not always a bad idea to let a character die in D&D &D or Starfinder, or really any uh, tabletop role-playing game. Uh, some of the some of the main reasons why are, you know, you, you want to let the, you want your, we'll break these down later, but you want your, you want people to know that, hey, this is a, this is a dangerous profession to be an adventurer, you're going to die. Two, on sort of the meta level, or well, meta level of B, you want to, uh, you want to have a challenge to your, to, to your players, but also a challenge they respect. And if your characters think, oh, okay, I'm just never going to die, I would have your... They'll do anything. Yeah, they'll do anything, and they'll also, like, you know, they'll treat the game less, um, I don't want to say less seriously, because it is still a game, but they won't treat, there's a possibility they won't treat your time or other people's time with respect, because they're off, you know, like, uh, you know, having a real chuckle hut of a game, yeah. reference there. Um, or you want, it's kind of fun to have, like, a little bit of tension and suspense mm -hmm. to a game. Yeah. Are there anything? Well, are there anything? What are your top reasons for like having a character die? Say, if you, if you wanted to pick the top uh, three or four. Well, for one, you know, it does, you know, risk versus reward. And um, there's a really good example. I think it's maybe in the Dungeon Master's Guide or Xanathar's Guide or Roll's Guide. It's, it's in one of those. It's in one of the books where basically, it's talking about how to make an interesting story. It's sort of more advice for DMs, but you know, it gives an example. Uh, it's like there's a thief and he rolls into town and he steals basically, you know, like a golden fountain or whatever, and then he goes to the Lord's Manor, steals everything, he well, walks out. A golden out. fountain, like one that's in front of the Marriott, like a big yeah, golden like, fountain? Yeah, like something like that, yeah, again. Jeez. So, and he does all that, that and then he walks like out. Too, probably. I don't know, just I'm sorry. Yeah, but he does all that, <laughs> and then he walks out of town scot-free. That's a boring story. But if it's something where, you know, if he's a well-known thief, first of all, that's a really bad thief if you're well-known. It's kind of one of those things where you don't want to be well-known. You know, risk versus reward. If, you know, nothing is going to hurt you, it's going to be a boring story. But if there are, if there is tension, if there is something on the line, uh, you know, I've been in campaigns where, you know, I knew the DM wouldn't kill my character and I end up doing really stupid or annoying things because, like, well, I can't die. So, it, and also, you tend to roleplay less. And that wasn't one of my games, right? No, you're, I, I, you're not quite Gygax, but you're not not quite. But I right, so I gotta level it up a little. But you know, it does make it a little more interesting because yeah, you're an adventurer. You're going out. You're you're walking into basically a spooky place. It'd be like if uh, I, it'd be the equivalent of you and your pals walking into stairs saying, "Okay, who wants some?" <laughs> You know, it's, it's adventuring. It's a dangerous thing you're doing. Yeah. Uh, one thing uh, that I like to do in, uh, in in pretty much any campaign that I start, uh, no matter what game it is, GURP, Starfinder, d and um, kill one of my players quick and uh, kill them preferably for doing something stupid. Uh, like, you know, say they are doing something stupid like, oh, I don't know, they, they, there is a really strong and powerful duke who invites them all into his um, into his you know secluded lair to discuss some some seedy deal that he has? Like say he wants to uh, kill uh, the another duke's rival, so it looks like it's him, so that the duke A can uh, the evil duke can expand his uh, his, his, his territory because he's framing him for murder, right? And then if say you have your lawful good paladin or lawful stupid paladin go up to him and start you know like, oh this can't stand and try to like lay down the thunder, and he's level one. And your Duke is there with you know like obviously like a, a group of his bodyguards, yeah, of really good guards. Yeah, and also you know maybe the Duke is somewhat magical himself too, or even like a dragon in disguise, but he still has to play politics. You know, murders him right then and there. Or you have the uh, the monk or the rogue who starts like, yeah, I'm just gonna mouth off to everybody because I'm an adventurer. Well, you know, that guy who just tried to hire you. Maybe he's an adventure too. He just doesn't want his cans dirty. Or maybe you know that's a really powerful or strong entity, and uh, they peel you and then leave you in a gutter. You know, kill them wrong and kill them bad early, so that it sort of sets the tone for the game. Or if you don't, that also sort of sets the tone for the game. Hey, we're just gonna have a more relaxed story here, guys. Don't worry about it. Yeah, and you know, it kind of it's, it all depends on what you want. But death, and it all depends. You know, it's it's all up to you as a dungeon master at your discretion. You know whether to kill someone or not. Like there are things like you know, let's say they're doing everything right, but let's say I don't know the dice are just being real rascal, uh, real uh, New Jersey rascals, and you know they're just you know usually they're like pretty good adventures they can hold their own, but right now with how they're rolling, they couldn't be you know they couldn't beat up a goblin if they jumped it sort of thing. Yeah, it all depends. You know? See, even in that situation, I'd still let uh, characters die because I one thing I hate as a player and as a character is if I know that my DM is sort of either pigeonholing me or making it so that I can't die. 
yeah. that sort of ruins the fun for me too a little bit. Um, sort of, uh, oh, I don't know, if, if in your game, say I was playing as uh, someone that's not the Mighty Susan, she who can never die or be harmed, uh, say, I was, say I was playing as, you know, some rogue or what have you, and you really liked my rogue, you really liked how he was acting, um, so you just never put him in an account because there was always some sort of divine entity to help him out. That sort of takes the wind out of my cells for being an adventure just because, well, this is uh, this is just the DM's character now, you know? Yeah. Um, but on the other hand, there's one th- if there's one thing that makes players quit, in my opinion, in my experience here with the, the decades or so that I've been DMing now, it's D- a heavy-handed DM. It's like if your character dies, it's very unlikely. Well, if one of your player characters dies, it's very unlikely that they're just gonna quit and leave the group. Even if you do play a group with children, which I've done before too, um, they're likely not going to like you know cry and leave the room. Um, they are going to be more upset if the DM is actively against your character. So that's one thing to watch out for too. Yeah. Like say, oh, okay, you know, I open up this, I, I open up this chest. Uh, that's you know been alluded to the, the final prize of the dungeon. What's inside? A sphere of annihilation, and what behind behind you is a mighty gust of doom. Can I make a con save or a, or a strength save to get away from it? No, you just die, Danny. Dude, I mean, why, yeah. why even play this game if you know that you care? If you know the DM's out for you. Yeah, and like you know, it's one of those things where you know you're you make these characters, you get invested, and you know what? Here's the reality: you're going to be kind of you're going to be a little miffed that you know that your character died and you took all this time and then you're you, so you're going to pout for your five ten minutes whatever and then you're going to come back be the you know grown up or mature adolescent that you are like for example so i was playing one of lance's games and i was you know it was a starfinder game and i was playing this orc called gazgul and he was basically just uh if you know about 40k at all um he was just your you know your regular standard um well if i can't eat it or kill it I'll eat it or kill it, sort of thing. And he would just be like a monster like that. And I was playing the character, and there's this thing where me and like the only people who show up to the adventure were me and this other guy. Not because they're running a bad game. It's... Yeah, they just I don't know. They yeah, maybe run a bad one game. of those weeks. Yeah. That's the whole other thing. But so me and him were like, okay, well, there's this just like before the game ended, the last session, you know, there's this distress beacon that we found, and we're like, all right, we're, we're we'll we'll check it out. And so, yeah, we basically, it was this ice plant. It's like, oh, the winds are way too high for the ship, so we probably wouldn't be the best idea to just fly to it. So we took this dune buggy. And while doing it, you know, Gazgul being Gazgul, I saw this uh, cool ice-looking formation, what, you know, what you know based on the rolls I was making, just sort of how it was being described to me. I thought, okay, it's a really weird, cool-looking ice thing. I'm going to jump it like, like the Duke boys. And uh, turned out to be some sort of a ice space dragon thing, it's a wing. And it was this big harrowing chase. It was really exciting. It was, you know, we're almost getting away from it, almost there. You know, we were driving from it. At one point, it started biting the car, and we, you know, made these deck saves. And we jumped out of it, and we tucked and rolled. And we were running. We were, like, throwing grenades. And um, I had a Yasaki companion who basically, he made up, because he was a mechanic, he had a harness that he put on my back, and so we were just, like, master blast. He was throwing grenades and taking pot shots at it while I was just gutting it and, you know, sometimes, you know, just sort of putting my gun backwards and just shooting at it and, you know, trying to break up the ice, do stuff. And we almost made it, and, you know, I had on one turn I had the Usaki, you know, call and say, oh, my God, ship's AI, we need help. Come come get us, you know, danger close, whatever, whiskey, tango, bravo, military <laughs> shenanigans. And just, so it was almost there, almost there. The ship was coming in, and then... Just you know, on like the last couple rounds, it burst through the ice and it jumped up and point blank range, it dragon breathed us. The thing is, I was because yeah, I just painted a whole miniature. Just you know, I busted my hump, paint this miniature just to get it ready for this. Yeah, and that's also like that right there is a good reason why you should kill, why you shouldn't just pull your punches with your your uh, your, your players. Because that story is probably going to be better than, or, yeah, you know, and then know an, angel sa- an angel saved me, or, you know, if I was a really heavy-handed DM, it's, uh, yeah, it turns out, instead of being, a, it was just a big old lizard the whole time, you know, yeah. that wouldn't have been as fun. Yeah, or even something where, like, you pulled your punch a little bit and were like, oh, yeah, that that attack, it only, you know, roll, roll your, when you were like, okay, roll your deck saves, and because it was a, a point-blank uh, you know, cone attack. It was kind of like, I'll let you roll because I'm a sporting man. 
I liked your role, but you failed it. Yeah, it was, it was one of those things where it's like, okay, you know, I'm, you know, if you've ever seen the movie Doctor Str- Strange Love, it's like when that uh, Texan was riding that nuclear missile that was gonna be dropped. It's like, yeah, he could roll it, but it's just not gonna make it probably. Yeah, no, he, he, he jumped out of the way in time. He's fine. No, he was riding the nuke no, on the way down. He jumped out. He got. Yeah. He got. A, he, listen, he got a 15 on his deck save. He rolled out of the way just in time. It's fine. Um, yeah, I mean, no. but let's lead in. So that so that sort of takes care of why it's uh, why it's okay. Uh, to let your characters uh, let, let your characters die. Or why you don't want to have a super heavy hand. And it would one thing that I one thing that lead, this leads into is why it can be better for sometimes as a player character to have mm-hmm. your characters die. You know, cool stories that uh, mm-hmm. aside. One thing one thing to you know sort of be grateful to be counted amongst the lucky dead would be for is. It gives you a chance to try a new character. Yeah. Um, for for one, like say you've been playing the same uh, Mountain Dwarf fighter for like you know a, for two old. years now, yeah. like the length of your campaign, and it's getting old, it's getting stale. But you haven't really found either a good push or a good segue into playing a new character, and you're not one of those guys like, hey DM, I just want to try something different, like how I am basically every game. Yeah. Um, this will give you a good lead into trying somebody new, and on top of that, say if say your party is fighting a lich or whatever or a or a death knight and that death knight he slays he, he slays bob you know right there in front of everybody but then he, he just sort of well that was my only real opposition i guess i'll leave now because i got what i wanted i took the animal from bob's or whatever whatever fantasy thing you're going up to, to have to fight against the death knight the lich that controls me i got his flacky back and go all i'm going away now uh, well, that adds a more fierce and also more hated en- enemy NPC mm-hmm. to go up against, rather than just, oh yeah, it's a, it's another Death Knight, oh no, it's another Goblin. Like even if say you are you are tracking down Cobalt in their Warren and somebody dies uh, due to a trap or what have you, that makes that Cobalt Warren seem that much more dangerous. Yeah, and these challenging fourth creatures seem like an actual yeah. challenge. Now. Well, also. Uh, the thing with kobolds is this more of a side. You know, kobolds themselves, like, you know, just, you know, serving these hands world star style, they're nothing. Like, you know, I'm, I'm not a big strong man, but I'm not really a mentor, but I think stats-wise, I could probably, uh, you know, kick kobolds' butt, but uh, their whole thing is, you know, they're not there to just, you know, sit, stand and deliver. They're, you know, they're kind of like the Viet Cong where they uh, they leave traps, they mislead you, they, uh, you know, they, they attack and then they run away and then... Yeah, and that's going to make your group want to go back for the ten foot pole or what have you. That they just, oh, yeah, it's just, it's just you know, cobalts, it's just goblins, what have you. We can just wait for these guys and call it a day. We'll collect their fifty gold. But they may be afraid to turn around because, well, oh no, what traps that we bypass? It was waiting behind us if we do try to flee, mm-hmm. uh, sort of thing like that. Yeah. And it adds that fun sort of tension, like you actually, you care about your character more. It seems like when you know that they can die. Yeah, you know, it adds stakes. Yeah, like you were saying exactly, like. When you when you know that they can die and that you know this death is going to be final, you cherish them more. Like I had a wizard, Graham, who I don't know why, but every time we'd get in a fight, the party strategy like, okay, guys, scatter, and then all of, and like every enemy after like one or two rounds would notice everyone here else is wearing armor or you know a monk and really hale and hearty, or they're just a guy in this kind of armor who doesn't know super kung fu or. Uh, a big old, you know, shield and legendary sword, or a flying gargoyle. Or that, even like the leather armor. Yeah, he's just wearing he's wearing a shirt, and so eventually I got really protected. Like I had this cool sword. If I killed someone with it, I would they would you know be my thrall forever. Oh, hard and I, yeah. I, yeah, I we got jibble jabs through that. That's a demon that I enslaved. I, I traded everything away just just to try to boost my AC as high as I could. Just because I kept dying so much, and eventually God of Death was like, "Dude, listen. Here's the thing. This isn't a this isn't a, a deli where you can get you know nine free punches. This isn't Dragon Ball Z. Next time you die, I don't care what you know. I don't care what they cast. I don't care if they you know, cast uh, stabilize. I don't care if they cast you know uh, resurrection. Yeah, resurrection or um, revivify or revivify or wish. <laughs> Yeah, it's like, listen. He's going to die. Listen, ain't nothing going to keep you. Next time you die, use mine. I'm, you know, listen, you're cluttering up my uh, my office. I'm done seeing you. Next time I see you is going to be the last time I see you. And so I was like, ah! And so I started playing him real careful. Like, I wouldn't throw out my, my big spells or whatever because I need them. Because, like, well, I need to cast, I don't know, like, you know, teleport or something. Or just because yeah. it's like, with everyone, you know, inevitably when the party says, scatter! And then I'm just like, <laughs> 
it's like, okay, I'm gonna, you know, instead of throwing, you know, fireballs, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna fly because, uh. and it was, and it wouldn't be as fun if you knew like the DM was always going to like let you go. You always have one more hit point to run away with. You know, with, uh, so. Yeah, I mean, you ended up dying during the final battle. That's pretty funny. Well, did you die as Graham, or did you sort of kind of merge? Sort. Well, we're no, getting off the side yeah. here, but yeah, it, it's more fun to like to know there's consequences to the thing. Uh, that bit, so that covers why it's good for your your, pay, your player characters uh, to die in your role playing game, and so I guess the last thing that uh, death can bring your characters, uh, aside from just a good time, is uh, plot hooks. Mm -hmm. um, we we uh, we can say there for that, where say your character does die, the cleric in the group they're either not powerful enough to resurrect them. Or you just don't have a cleric or druid in your group. Or maybe the cleric just have the materials to do it. Like yeah, like, you're, like you you don't have a gram in your group where you always be carrying around a handful of diamonds because you know they're gonna die eventually anyway. Um, that can that can be like that can start a quest of itself where okay now we have to go find an angel or now we have to go you know make good with this uh, with this with temple. The pope. Yeah, with the, with the pope or what have you, so he can like you know commission a cleric to come resurrect a gram or whoever whoever dies in your game. Yeah. Uh, that can be like a quest of itself, or maybe if you're a necromancer, you know, I want to find a good spell to bring old Graham back, but I also don't want Graham to ever sass me again, so... Bro. Yeah. Or something, or one thing you can do is, because once you start getting a higher level, and if you have a druid or a cleric who just can resurrect, I don't want to say it will cheapen death if resurrect is just, okay, once a day I just get this, uh, it's like, oh man, they're dead, okay, they're just basically taking a nap for 24 hours until I can take a like a regular sleep and then go yeah. you know maybe you can do something where on top of the components you need for casting resurrection you say oh well you also you, you can only cast resurrection in this one place or or maybe like there's some sort of a negative benefit to it where um you know you have to rest his soul like say if Graham was evil i'm not saying was it uh -huh. but say Graham was evil or say brian was evil whoever you're trying to res here and their soul is being held by a devil or a demon well, now you gotta, you gotta fight this entity to bring back your murder hobo companion because they want them to, you know, be their, their chain monkey in the nine hells or what have you. Yeah. Um, so does that cover everything as far as um, why it's a good idea to let your characters die in, in really any tabletop role-playing game you play? Yeah, it does it for me. Oh, well, that does it for me too. Um, remember to like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching 27 Night.